on this problem. <laughs> so this is where we left off. And I had said that an antiderivative on each side would be, take care of the dy and the dt part. So all we're going to do is apply an antiderivative on both sides. So this next step, we're going to just go integrate on both sides. Now you should be able to do these integrals. What antiderivative is on the left? The 1 over y dy. So that's, that's our ln y, or natural log y. And what about the right side? Don't say k squared. It's not a dk. So it's kt. All right, what did I forget? The plus c. Now there's a plus c on each side. So if I just write plus c plus c, it'll imply that's the same constant. So they would cancel out. So that's not right. So we're going to call one of them constant 1 and one of them constant 2. And then we'll add the two constants together. So I want to solve for y. So I'll subtract c1 to the other side. Oh. Plus c2 minus c1. So let's just create another constant, c, which is the difference of two other constants. So two constant numbers subtracted gives me another constant. So we'll just call this one c. Now any time that you do uh, integration on both sides, you can do this little trick where you just write plus c on one of the two sides. So whatever side you want to write it on doesn't matter. If your friend writes it on the other side, you're just going to have a negative value of what the other person is going to get. So whatever side you put your constant on, as long as you're consistent, you should get the same uh, answer. So last step, how do I solve for y? So I have to do the inverse natural log. So it's really it's a function composition here, so I have to unnatural log. So you could either write ln inverse on both sides. So I'm just going to take ln inverse of the whole equation. Now natural log inverse is e to the kt plus c. And a little bit of algebra. This is e to the kt times e to the c. And we're going to make another substitution. We're going to let the variable a equal e to a constant power. So we're going to be left with a times e to the kt. And that's the nicest form for y that we can write, the most simplified. Oh, absolutely. Yes, so we will do some examples for sure. Uh, we'll solve a few more differential equations and then go into some uh, examples with numbers on them. So we'll do our word problems at the end. Uh, so I've said separable means they can be separated. So here's what the separable form looks like. So if you can write it in this form, So if you can write your expression as a product with just x in the first term and y in the second term. And the next algebra step you would make is divide both sides by h of y and multiply both sides by dx. Oops. 
and then you integrate. So this is going to be the procedure we're going to follow for all these. Mm -hmm. So this is written really nicely and very easy to separate. The y's on the x's, pretty easy to see that they're going to be able to be separated with just some easy division. So step one, we're going to get all the y's on the left, x's on the right. So divide both sides by 1 plus y. And multiply both sides by dx. And from here, I'd probably be insulting your intelligence if I finish problem off. So I want you to integrate both sides now. You don't have to write your integral sign in green. I just am writing it because it's the extra thing I'm doing that wasn't in the original problem. So integrate both sides and solve for y. It'll be kind of similar to the first problem we did. All right, so we're going to do u substitution on the left side, u equals 1 plus y. This is not exactly in the 1 over u form, but we're about to get into the 1 over u form. And a derivative is just 1 dy. So we're making that substitution. I recommend, if you notice, I, I try to write my u substitution off to the side so that I don't fill up this area with my u substitution. So I can just keep dropping down doing calculus. So 
keep your use substitution either off to the side. If you want to put your use substitution down here, it's fine. Do the rest of your calculus in another area. But I know it's especially you would do your use sub and then continue your calculus right below. So you don't want to mix the two together. All right, so we got our u sub. So left side is 1 over u du. Right side, I can just integrate that, e to the x. I'm going to put my constant on the right side, because I'm going to solve for u in the end, or for y. So I'm going to be trying to simplify the left side. So this is antiderivative form you should know. That's ln u. Technically, it's absolute value of u. But I'm not going to worry about the absolute value. We have to unsubstitute. Isn't there supposed to be a plus C as well? <clears throat> so that's a good question. So if I put another plus C, oh, I they, yeah, they I cancel out have that problem that we had before. Right. So there is a constant on both sides, but we collect them all together and write it only on one side. Yeah. And I recommend if you're going to be you know, solving for the variable on the left side, I'd put it off on the right side. If I was solving for the x, I'd bring it to the other side. Right. Uh, natural log inverse, both sides. And then this is e to the e to the x plus c. And then subtract 1. And you can write this as e to the c and then e to the e to the x. Anytime you write a power of a power, you really need to use parentheses so you know what order they're written in. And you can write this as a. So e to the c, you can just let that equal a. So there's our y at the end. Could you also write that as negative form plus e uh, raised to the c plus e to the x? Yeah, you can leave it. Leave it more, uh, that would be in, you can leave it closer to that form, yeah. Okay. But would you, uh, like on a quiz or something, would you take off points if we did leave it in that form? Like Probably not. Point? Oh, okay. All right. So we, on a quiz, we wouldn't have to do the A. Thing. You're, on a quiz, you'd probably have to tell me what value A is. Or maybe can we just say like E to the C? You can, but then you'd tell me what E to the C is instead of A. At some point, you'll... In a word problem, you'll figure out the constant. Whether it's in this form or this form, you're going to tell me the value of that. All right, next up. So this one is not in such a nice form, but that's all right. Everything is separable. We're able to get all the x's on one side and the y's on the other side. So step one, I'm going to move the dx over. So we get all the x's on the right, all the y's on the left. You just do that with some divisions, and then do your best to integrate. I'll give you a hint for antiderivatives, they're both going to be u substitutions. And 
you don't want to overuse the letter U, so I'll make one of them a U sub, and the other one I'm going to use the letter W and make a W sub. And I'll write the correct U sub on the board, but I won't say it out loud. So don't look up if you want to find it yourself. This will spoil it. So these antiderivatives are a little bit tricky. So we'll start with the y antiderivative. So I let u equal the denominator. The reason why this is a good choice is because du is almost y dy. The only problem is there's a 2. So how do I get deal with the 2 y dy over here? Yeah, so bring on the other side. So divide both sides by 2. So on the left, we're going to get integral. We get the 1 half du. And we get 1 over u. So any questions on the substituting in right there? Now I'm going to go to the right side. <clears throat> the right side's actually a little bit more tricky. So I'm going to use a w sub. w is x plus 1. Now I have a problem. What in the world do we write up there? So when you make substitution, you've got to go all the way into W's. And it's like if you get on a boat from a dock. You can't just put one foot on the boat and one foot on the dock. You've got to go for it. So we've got to jump on the boat. So we're going to do right up here, we're going to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 1. It's not hard to solve for x. So this means w minus 1 equals x. So where I see x, I'm going to put in w minus 1. Now, still not that easy. Did anybody get past this step? All right, so how do we get past here? We're just going to do some algebra. So I'm going to unadd these fractions just like that. So it's w over w minus 1 over w. Maybe I'll show the w over w part. So that should be pretty clear as to why they're equal. And then it's just 1 minus 1 over w. And antiderivative 1 is w. Antiderivative 1 over w, that's natural log w. And then we're going to need our plus constant out of there. Left side's pretty straightforward. That's 1 half ln u. Now we've got to unsubstitute everything back out. 
So we'll do the right side. We got x plus 1 minus ln x plus 1 plus c. On the left side, we said u was y squared plus 1. From here, solving for y, well, we're not going to actually be able to solve all the way for y. We'll have y equals plus or minus at the very end because our last step is going to be take a square root. So I'm going to leave it in this form right here. So we won't actually be able to get to y equals. It'll be y equals plus or minus. A couple steps away from that anyways. So I'll just leave this as our <coughs> answer here. Uh, if it's, so if the web work question says solve for y, uh, but they, a lot of them are just going to say, well, they'll say different things. If it says, you know, what's the equation that this represents, this is the equation. This is one form of that equation. So they may get specific about what form they want it in. Yeah, don't, so if you're on a quiz, don't spend, and you're running out of time or a midterm, don't spend time simplifying. Move on. To the, like, simplifying is worth a small part of the points. Uh, me seeing your calculus, you're supposed to demonstrate your calculus skills. Uh, now, if your algebra skills are really low, you're going to have trouble figuring out maybe where things intersect or, or uh, you know, turning into a nicer form for calculus. But you can at least do some calculus. So we don't have time to get all the way into this problem, but we'll write it down so we don't have to do that tomorrow or Monday. So these would be all of our story problems or word problems. So we'll look at the spread of disease. So when a disease is properly treated, dy over dt, which is how many cases um, or how the number of infected people changes over time. So dy dt is proportional to the number of infected people. So this means, uh, proportion means that they're not quite equal, but they're equal up to some constant. It's called a constant of proportionality. But that uh, proportional just means they're off by a multiple. Like yeah, and that's k. So we're going to figure out what k is. Uh, now when I say, that, well, it's a constant of proportionality, not the constant you're going to get. You'll get uh, another constant when we integrate. So it's not that constant. Depending on the disease and depending on proper treatment, uh, some diseases that spread really, really quickly, this is a big k. Some diseases that don't spread quickly or are treated really well, it's a small k. So it just depends on the different disease and how it's treated. So we have this, and we're going to go ahead and solve for y, but we'll do that on Monday. So it's going to be just like that first example problem we did.